Hello everyone, my name is Daniel from SpanishListening.org and today I'm going to talk about something that is probably the very first headache for many people who study Spanish is uh, the verb to be, uh, which in Spanish uh, we have two verbs one is the verb ser and the other one is the verb estar so I'm going to try to make it very quickly and very simple so here we go we're going to see a couple of examples uh, generally we can say that ser is like a permanent state and start on the other hand is something temporary but we're gonna see some examples uh, for example ser uh, we use it when we talk about something permanent for example yo soy Daniel y soy chileno that's not gonna change or it's not supposed to change we also use ser when we talk about something characteristic of a person for example mi hermano es muy alto. Also, when we talk about materials, la mesa es de madera. Uh, and we also use ser when we talk about an occupation. For example, soy estudiante de español. On the other hand, we use estar when we talk about something like a temporal condition. Uh, in this case, we can say estoy enfermo. Also, we use it when we talk about a position or a location. For example, mi papá está en el trabajo. And finally, we use estar when we talk about actions. For example, mis hijos están durmiendo. These are really general explanations. Of course, there are a couple of exceptions. We're going to see two of them that are really, really common. When we talk about events, we don't use estar, even though they are temporary and they can be really, really short. We use ser instead. For example, la reunión es en la casa de Claudia. Although it's temporary, we use ser. The other exception is the verb to die, morir. Uh, we say, el padre de Juan está muerto. Even though this cannot change, we use estar in this case. Now we're going to see some words that can go with ser or estar. But the meaning is a bit different. Let's see some examples. Viejo, it means old. And we use ser viejo. Alguien es viejo, it means that probably the person was already old when, when we first met him or met her, right? Your grandfather, your grandmother, ellos son viejos. But if we say that somebody está viejo, it means that probably that person looks old, right? In the case of gordo or gorda, it means that the person has always been fat. And uh, we can say that, for example, like, uh, mi padre es gordo, but if you say that, Alguien está gordo, it means either that the person looks fat or that the person gained weight in a short period of time. If, for example, you stop seeing a friend for three, four months and that, that person gains, I don't know, five, six kilos, you can say, estás gordo. Another word is rico, sabroso, delicioso. When we talk about taste, we say, esto es rico, and we mean that we usually like that food. For example, la pizza es rica. In that case, we use ser. On the other hand, we use está rico if we mean that is particularly now. For example, if we try a new preparation, a new way of making something, you can say la pizza está muy rica because probably you add some new ingredients or you made it in a different way. Uh, well, that's it. Very simple. Well, I hope this explanation was useful, um, but if you have any questions or if you have any comments, please send me an email. My email address is daniel at spanishlistening.org. Uh, also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And well, thank you very much for watching us and see you in the next video. Ciao!